y'all thanks so much for clicking on the video my name is leah and let's recap and review real housewives of dubai this is season two episode 13 the finale episode so let's get into it know, sometimes before we get into it we get a little spicy over here and there's a few things that caught my eye while scrolling very much doom scrolling on the internet because my god today the world <laughs> and the things that people are going through it's a lot um and I saw some things that caught my eye. So first of uh, the reunion trailer, I, I don't, what was that? It, it was very lackluster. It didn't give me anything. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because a trailer is supposed to like entice you to watch something. But like all I got from it is it looked like Talene whacked Brooks a good time. And it looks like Ayan got whacked pretty hard throughout the reunion because she looked defeated at the end. So I'm not sure what's what's going to happen, but we're going to watch it anyway. <laughs> so next is this. So I was on OMFG Reality TV, and they had posted the clips of Ayan and Lisa having their argument at the party. And I saw Lisa in the comments, and I thought her comment was interesting, but she said this. We actually agreed not to bring up she acts different or make it a thing on camera, but she brought it up three times prior to the convo, which is why I was annoyed. Had nothing to do with the party or who she was with, uh, who she was with, who she befriended or who she's friends with. My bad, you guys. We also agree that not bringing it up the bragging convo, but I did it out of retaliation to her playing these stupid games. So Lisa is saying her irritation with Ayan at the party had nothing to do with her being friends with Stanberry. I beg to differ, and we'll talk about that in the review. But she was just like, I brought up the conversation because she brought up the conversation we agreed not to bring up. So if you're playing games, I'm, I'm going to play them too. So that's kind of interesting. The other thing that I found interesting was um, this comment where Lisa quote tweeted it on Twitter, where somebody by the name of Jordy said this, I think I like Lisa so much because she really doesn't play pretend with these girls and they can't take it. If she's annoyed with you, she's going to straight up tell you everyone takes it as rude. I take it as real. And Lisa said this, I just need to work on my delivery. And that's the issue with Lisa. Like, I already told y'all, Lisa and Ion, I really didn't care for that much season one. This season, eh, I still don't care too much for them. But what I will say is that I think Lisa, it's not wrong that Lisa is upfront about her feelings. She just needs to learn how to be more tactful with the way that she says it, as well as she got to start playing the Real Housewives game. You have to loosen up. You have to not take everything as like shade, shade, but take it as a cute little fun shade, even if it is meant to be shade, shade. But like you have to start building relationships with these women or you're not going to have screen time. Because like I said, um... Last last week on the review, I think Lisa is unintentionally isolating herself because she thought her and Ayan were going to be like Giselle and Robin on Real Housewives of Potomac. Giselle and Robin were rocking with each other strong seven seasons in. Because I think this is this, you know, eight seasons in, eight seasons in. And we probably only saw them maybe have a spat or a, a difference of opinion like maybe a handful of times, maybe five times out of the eight seasons they were on that show together. And whether Giselle was wrong or Robin was wrong, good, bad, or indifferent, they was locked in like this. And I think, I, I not Ayan, I think Lisa thought that's what she had with Ayan. And she never took the opportunity to reach out and talk to the other women because it's clear as day that Sarah really don't like her. Because Sarah always is accosting Lisa. Well, I won't say accosting Lisa, but she always blames Lisa for every situation. And she's always throwing digs at Lisa. And low-key, they be microaggressions at times. Then you have her and Talene. Lisa don't like Talene. She finds Talene annoying. Then her situation with Stanberry. I think Lisa and Stanberry could be friends, but Lisa is so defensive and she really doesn't trust Stanberry that... She's never going to let her guard down even a little bit around Stanberry. Then you have her and Ayan. I, she and Ayan are not on good terms, and I don't think they're going to be on good terms for a long time. And then Brooks. Brooks and Lisa have a wishy-washy relationship. One minute they good, one minute they not. And I think Lisa is cool to have fun with Brooks, but she don't trust Brooks as a friend. 
And that leaves nobody else for her to really be able to kick it with, honestly, on this show. So it's like you're going to have to start branching out and getting to know these women in order to, like, build some type of relationship with them. And what confirms to me that Lisa has pretty much isolated herself is Brooks. So Brooks was on Twitter and she replied to... um, to Jay's reality blog, they also posted the clip of Lisa and Ayan having the falling out at the party. And she said this, Ayan lied. Now we all have gotten to see it in HD. She constantly changes stories and narratives and cries that she didn't speak English when confronted. At Lisa Milan is vindicated. We were all confused on who was right and who was wrong until we watched it. Hashtag RHO Dubai. So this to me tells me that everybody was on Ayan's first initially because they don't really see it for Lisa. Like, they couldn't be objective about it because like I said, Lisa has isolated herself to the point where like people not really trying to give her the benefit of the doubt. And now that they were able to see it in HD, like Brooks is saying, maybe it's giving them clarity. And she's saying Ayan has changed the narrative. So maybe they have questioned Ayan about what took place, what was said. And it seems like Ayan might have been changing the story around to make it fit her narrative. And now that they have this more evidence, they're like, no, girl, you was in the mess too. Because in my opinion, I think both of them are at fault at this point. But let's get into the review. Let's talk about the episode. So it opens opens up and the people the group the girls are still on their staycation with their husbands we got like three different conversations going on you got Brooks um Seba and Sarah having breakfast together then Ayan and Lisa and their husbands are having breakfast together and then Stanberry Sergio and Rafi and Talin are together having coffee together in the morning and everybody is talking about the situation between Talin and Lisa, you got Brooks and Sarah and Seba pretty much being like, girl, I'm sick of Lisa tr- being like throwing digs in our face, talking about we don't have businesses like her when we all have our own businesses, like get a different read, girl. It's not hitting the way you think it's hitting. OK, and we we pretty much tired of it. Sarah's like Lisa needs to stop calling people out of their names. And I'm like, shut up, Sarah. I just... I really don't see it for Sarah. It's something about Sarah that just feels dishonest that I just, I just, I don't rock with, you know? And I I will say out of everybody, because I see a lot of people are like, they don't like Brooks. And I get why they don't like Brooks. She a chaos demon, but I can get with Brooks more so because I can believe this is Brooks. And I can believe I, the way Ayan is behaving is Ayan. The way Lisa is behaving is Lisa. The way Stanberry is behaving is her. The way Talene is behaving is her. Even with Seba, but with Sarah, it just feels like a facade and a fraud. And I don't like that with housewives. Like be yourself, even if it's a bad version of yourself, at least it's yourself. <laughs> like I can rock with that, you know, versus me feeling like you putting up a front. And I don't like that, you know? So then we see the conversation with um, Sergio and um, Stanberry. uh, What's Sergio, Stanberry, Rafi, and Talene. And Talene is pretty much telling um, Stanberry, girl, you didn't stick up for me because Sergio and they was having like a back and forth. And um, I think Stanberry was telling Sergio to be quiet because she was sticking up for Talene. And Talene was like, because he's sticking up for me, not like you. And then she does the mime thing, which lets me know Brooke was telling the truth when she um, was tweeting out about Talene going off on Stanberry saying that she was standing there acting like a mime walking away when she got into it with Lisa at the um, table at the rooftop and Talene felt like Stanberry was the culprit of rallying everybody up and putting a battery in her back and that's the thing as much of a chaos demon as Brooks is she don't be lying when she bring her receipts the receipts be receding okay (laughs) they be receding so Stanberry basically tells Celine, girl, I was not about to get into that. I already told you off rip, like, don't get into that. And you got into it anyway. Like, that was a conversation that was between Brooks and Lisa. And you see, Brooks didn't even stand up for you while Lisa was giving you the business. And you should have just stayed out of it. You should have just stayed out of it because they were working it out. And so Celine's like, okay, I can give you that. I can give you that. But what happened last night? The way she cut my head off last night, that was not warranted. And I will give Talene that. I do think Lisa came in too hot, but I feel like Lisa was feeling ganged up upon at that time. And that's why she was giving her 
you know, the business. Because I was just like, yeah, Lisa, you had already clocked her at the table. There was no need for you to come at her then because Talene even said she wasn't getting into it with you and like with you and her and Brooks because you and Brooks were arguing and Brooks kept being like, Tao, back me up. And Talene wasn't saying anything because Talene was like, I already been called a bitch already. Like, three times today I don't want no parts of this so there was really no need for Lisa to really be giving her the work or that smoke so we then see the sit down with Lisa and Ayan and their husbands and Lisa pretty much says that she feels like Talene just be butting her head into situations that don't concern her and it adds gasoline to the fire and that's just what she does, and that annoys her about Talene. Girl, you just don't like Talene, Lisa. <laughs> you just don't like her. Because the thing that you said that annoys you about Talene, you do the same for Ayan. Everybody does that in this group. If they see somebody getting ate up that they're close with, they jump in and try to defend them. It just, it is what it is. You just don't like that lady. Um, but I do feel like it was warranted for Talene to get cussed out on top of that mountain, uh, not mountaintop, but on top of the rooftop. Cause this was not a conversation you needed to butt your head into. So we find out that they're going to do like a beach day while they're sitting at the table. Rich brings up, um, um, Lisa's husband brings up how like, he was like, Ayan really got your back. And Lisa was like, yes, she really does. And, and Ayan's like, cause you my girl. And at times it does feel like Ayan is like performing too much for Lisa, like her loyalty. And I think that's what the girls find off putting about their relationship because it does seem like that at times. And so we actually see all the couples down at the beach. They're sitting in one cabana, the boys are sitting in another cabana and while they're sitting down we see um Talene tell Lisa that she wants to have a conversation with her honestly they should have had the conversation separately away from the group but they did it in front of the girls and so Talene's like I am don't give me that look like I'm not gonna come at your friend like that and I am like I'm more scared for you than than for her and so Stanbury ends up being like, I want no parts of this conversation because I don't understand why you need to ha keep having a one-on-one -on -one with her. Like it already happened, let it go. So she gets up and goes and sits with the boys because they're sitting right beside them. And so um, Talene basically tells Lisa, you know, I'm, I shouldn't have butted in between the conversation you and Brooks were trying to have. I was trying to have my friends back and I should have let you two have that out. But I feel like it's very condescending when you try to put me down in my business. And so um, Lisa is like, well, y'all were attacking me and we were arguing. So if we're arguing, I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And I agree with Lisa with that. If we're arguing, girl, it is what it is. I say what I say. You say what you say. The point of an argument is to disable your um, opponent. <laughs> it's to neutralize them. And if my words cut that deep, then they done their job. So then you have, I think Sarah was like, it's condescending. And so then... Lisa was just like, we were arguing. Y'all were coming at me. And then she was like, Brooks tried to, like, Brooks, y'all came into my, no, I think she was like, y'all came into my business, you and Brooks, pretty much talking bad about my event and about my business. And Brooks is like, that's not what, that's not what happened. So then Ayan jumps in and basically says that y'all were giving jealous vibes, jealous tease towards Brooks. She was like, are you drunk right now? And she keeps coming at, I don't know why Ayan keeps poking at Brooks. Like Brooks don't, like Brooks won't cut back at Ayan. We've seen her do it before. And so Brooks is like, Ayan, what are you talking about? Like we already had a conversation. I'm not jealous of her. I felt some type of way. What are you, what, like, what are you talking about? And so then... I think Talene ends up being like, are you going to apologize or not? And then Lisa's like, no, I'm not apologizing, especially if you're going to give me that type of energy. Like, you ain't getting no apology out of me off rip. Like, it's 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 whatever. And I feel like at this point, Lisa should have apologized because I would have just, if it was me, I'd have been like, hey, I'm not apologizing for the way in which I came at you on that rooftop because you tried me. Now at dinner, I was out of line and I apologized for calling you out your name at that time and then kept it pushing. But I do understand her feeling like everyone's coming at me like, hey, you're not going to force me to apologize unless you want me to apologize. That's it. 
So then Sarah and Seba are acting like they're so above the drama and like it's too much for them. And then she's like, my son has a fever. I'm going home. So they leave. They leave. So then Lisa pretty much is like, you can't be acting bitchy towards me and not and I not clock it. So then she tells Rich, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to go. And Rich, you can tell, wanted to stay and keep hanging out with the guys. And he was like, why don't you just come sit with us? And she's like, no, I don't want to be around them. I'm ready to go. And he's like, I bet. So they actually get up and leave. So then Ayan comes and sits down closer to Talene and Brooks. And Talene is like, we got to stop. I think Brooks was like, we have to stop with the clickish stuff. Like, you can have her bag. We can have all each other's bag, but we got to stop the click stuff. And Talene ends up telling Bro um, Ayan, I feel like if... Uh, if Lisa were to stab me, you pretty much would say like it was okay. And I was like, no, I wouldn't. And she was like, yes, you, yes, you would. Like you act differently when she's around. And they all are saying that she acts differently when Lisa is around. And I can, I can agree to that because it does seem like Ion is trying to like prove her loyalty to Lisa or prove like I got your back. And she starts to like shift when Lisa is around. And so Ayan's like, no, but you can tell that Ayan feels some type of way. Like she doesn't like the fact that everyone is viewing her as being like Lisa's puppet or being somebody so easily controlled or that she switches up around the ladies. So after Lisa leaves, everyone just jumps into the pool and they look like they're having a good time. So now it's Ayan is trying to like assess her relationship with Lisa, feeling like, I don't want these girls to feel like I'm acting funny towards them off rip because I'm friends with you. So it seems like everyone is preparing for the summer. It's, I guess it's normal in Dubai. Like during the summers, you don't stay there. Like they all are like gone for like summer vacation for like two months, um, mainly because it gets so hot during the summers in Dubai that it's, I think Lisa said on average, it's 120 de 20 degrees Fahrenheit every day. I said, girl, no. <laughs> It hit a smooth 90 out here. I'm inside the house. <laughs> Fan on. Okay. Shorts and a tank top. So they're all telling us like where they're going. I think a few of them are going to France, the Maldives, England. Um, I think some people said Cannes. I know that's in France. Paris a few times. I think Talene said they're going to New York and like Boston and all these other places. And I think I heard somebody say like the Bahamas or Hawaii. But Everybody travels during the summer because it's so hot. Then you got Sarah who loved to be different, who always got to tell everybody she's so different. She is planning to only take her and her son to the Maldives for like five days. She was like, I love the heat. Ugh. I can't stand girls like, no, not even girls. I can't stand people like that who always have to be like contrarian and always have to like set themselves apart. Like, okay, girl, we get it. You different. We get it. <laughs> we get it. So we find out that Lisa is, um, her and her husband are looking for a farm. Rich has always had the dream to buy a farm in England where he grew up. And when Lisa and Stanberry had their sit down, maybe two episodes ago, she brought up about how they wanted to purchase a farm. And so Stanberry is like, oh, well, my parents are like putting their house up for auction. Y'all could take that house. But for what Lisa and Rich want to do, Stanberry house isn't as big as, as what they need. They need like like a bunch of acres of land because I guess they really want to have like Rich wants a farm farm. So we end up seeing this scene of Stanberry and what's her name? Ayan sitting down at lunch and Ayan is just like dumbfounded and kind of really shocked that her and Stanberry are actually cool with each other and that she was like I never thought this would happen especially after what happened in Bali but she really likes Stanberry and Stanberry really likes her. So they decide that they want to put on like a Shouts out to the summer, like happy summer kind of event for everyone to come. Uh, Stanberry says she has a friend that has like this wonderful house that's a bunch of room where they could have like a really nice upscale party and we can invite all the girls. So they film the video and then we have this scene of Sarah and her son. They're doing homework together. Sarah gives us like a brief update about her son and his like mental state, especially with the whole kidnapping situation. And she says like he's very scared. Like she can barely go like to work. She's had to cancel a couple of speeches gigs like he always wants to be around her and I'm like are you really like put like is he in therapy like 
fit. I know Sarah don't believe in Western therapy. Okay. She believes in holistic therapy and I do believe in holistic therapy, but I believe in like, like one health type of therapy in the, like, in the sense of like everything can be, can help you at once. Like you can have him doing holistic therapy, but you can also have him actually doing Westernized therapy where he sits down with somebody and they just talk to him because I don't like, I see. And this is also why you don't tell your kids everything. You just don't. Cause now a little boy having night terrors. <laughs> okay. So we end up finding out that Sarah is just really going through it. Her son is scared and processing. She's processing the situation. And now the cherry on top is her situation with a kind. And so she ends up calling him and just basically she was trying to, I'm, I'm look, Far be it for me to be on a man's side. And I'm not really on a kind side because I do think he was giving opportunists. But girl, you was trying to play in his face and break up with him on camera. And he gave you very much, haha, <laughs> not today, Satan, and hung up on you. And I would have did the same. Because what? why are you FaceTiming me, calling me, being like, I need a break? But not specifying what you mean by a break. Talking about I need to focus on my son, which you should. But like... You was trying to embarrass that man. And he said, you're not going to do me like this and click up and had Sarah looking like, <laughs> looking sad as hell. Just like, like she was dumbfounded that that man hung up on her. And I said, since he hung up on you, block him, block him. But she didn't do that. See, and that's the thing. That's why I think Sarah is a bird. Cause one minute, cause this, cause this is the thing. You can't try to break up with someone and be like, I need a break. And then they hang up on you and still want to work it out. No, bro, block. That, that, that response should have let you know what was up. But I don't fault him that much because what you're not about to do is play in my face on national TV. <laughs> you're just not. <laughs> you're just not. So he hung up on her. Sarah is upset because she really was just like, I wasn't trying to break up with him. I was just trying to like let him know I need to make my son a priority. Well, then you could have said that. Like, you're supposed to be this healed person, but you can't communicate that. All you had to do is tell that man, hey, I really like you, but I feel like the situation with my son and uh, with the kidnapping and me is really taking a toll on this relationship, and I my feelings are all over the place. And I think right now I need to make my son a priority, but I still want you to be a part of my life. If that does not work for you, then we can stop whatever this friendship, dating ship, or whatever you want to call it is. And I, you know, appreciate the time I experienced with you and peace out. But you was trying to play with that man. Talk about, I need a break. Girl, you tell me, if a man ever tells me I need a break, okay, we breaking up. Because what we need, what you need a break for? Okay. So then we get this scene of Yasmin and Caroline Brooks, not Brooks, Caroline Stanberry. They're actually at uh, the stables and we find out that um, Stanberry used to take her sons and her daughter um, horseback riding all the time when they were kids. And she really took to heart the conversation that she had with Yasmin earlier in the season about not feeling like a priority and that Sergio is the priority. And then she also was reflecting on the conversation that she had with her mom and she was like, she wants to do better so I thought this was great that she heard her daughter she listened and she said you know what I'm gonna put in effort and they seemed to have a good time before they got on the horses they talked about the baby and I think Yasmin was correct she was like you don't want your child to be resentful and you don't want to resent the child because if the only reason why you're having this baby is because of Sergio and it's not because you want to have a baby or because you like you want it then there's no point in having that kid and that's the truth that's the truth. And as Caroline talks about, she thinks Sergio is just so uh, like worried about like the five O and they do the flashback where the fertility doctor basically tells her like, you might want to, you need to have a baby before you turn 50. And she's like, I don't think Sergio would be rushing for us to have a baby. Had he not heard that information? Cause she's 47 now. Sergio, I think is 30 and I don't know, girl. I think either way, he probably would be rushing. But yeah, like maybe not so much if you were like 45. Maybe you could have like your your cutoff date could have been like, I have a baby by 47. You know what I mean? But you don't want to have kids and that's okay. He need to understand that and move on. We then get this scene of Ayan with these huge um, puffed up <laughs> sweaters. It gave me very much like Queen of Hearts. 
like a, like a Carter Dex kind of energy. And she's on the phone with her older sister talking about her conversation with Huda Beauty and how that went very well. And then she gets emotional because her sister is talking about how proud of sh- her she is. They then get on the topic of conversation about Lisa. And she was like, you know, it's just kind of weird that all of the girls say that I act different when I'm around her. And I don't think I do that, but maybe I do. And she was like, I tried to have the conversation with Lisa, but Lisa didn't want to have the conversation. And she pretty much was like, I don't want to have this conversation because it's pretty much, you're trying to make me seem like I'm a bad friend. And then they end up showing us a bunch of, um, like background, not background footage, but like flashback footage. And it was funny. Cause I said, whoever in production, does not like they do not fool with Lisa because some of them edits they was definitely breaking the fourth wall and then Lisa had me dying online because she posted um a tweet where she said no edit she said no edit formed against me shall prosper and I cackled because I was like yeah girl you must have pissed somebody off because they show Lisa season one when she was telling basically telling Ayan you don't need to apologize to Stanberry Stanberry need to apologize to you and then when they were having the sit down at um Stanberry's like this season Stanberry's um what housewoman party and they were talking about like adoption and all this other stuff and Ayan was talking about like how her mom adopted a lot of kids in the village and you hear I have Lisa being like cut it out it's giving story line pretty much trying to edit Ion and then you have Ion showing up to some party that they must have had where Lisa was like whose birthday is it girl is it yours or like mine like what like what are we doing here so it is giving the illusion that Lisa is giving very controlling as a friend but then I look at Ion you are a 50 you between the ages of 45 and 50 you can stand up for yourself we've seen you do it before we saw you in the beginning of this season cut sarah out (laughs) so i know you're not that afraid of lisa we've seen you go off on talene we've seen you go off on brooks we've seen you go off on stanberry so you can't act like you such this victim of like being with somebody that's controlling when we've seen you have a backbone before you're choosing this ma'am but her sister ends up being like i i hate this jealousy i don't even know why god created jealousy but i'm like is lisa really jealous i don't know when it came to the whole like um the whole storyline of it all it kind of gave me like girl her trying to tell her you doing too much like tone it down maybe she didn't want Ion to look bad but i don't know i don't know if lisa is really jealous of Ion of Ayan and Stanberry's party. We see everybody getting ready. We actually see Ayan and Stanberry pull up to the house that they are having the party in. It's a beautiful home. They got, I think, I think they were Bugattis. Were they Bugattis or Ferraris? Either way, they had like like double million dollar cars sitting in the house on display. Then they had but a bunch of them out in the front of the house and they had one number license plate. I remember how much those license plates cost because last season when Nina was on and she was getting a new car and she wanted a license plate, I think they were saying that the less numbers you have, the more the license plates cost. Like the license plates can cost upward to like two and three million dollars. So whoever's house that was, money like money probably blood money but it's blood money (laughs) like it's money I was like that's a lot so we see Lisa getting her hair done and she was just kind of like this whole party situation is weird to her when it pertains to Ion and Stanberry like maybe Ion hasn't been very truthful about her feelings about Stanberry because all of a sudden you was mad at her and now y'all having this party so we have these two big like chairs sitting in front of the like the in the foyer of the house and then Ion and Stanberry are, are having everybody like kiss the hand or kiss the ring and everyone's like girl what is this what is this so we end up seeing Sarah and Seba get in there first they are like girl what is this but they shake their hands they didn't kiss their hands they shake their hands you know they go they bow and whatever we then see Nina looking beautiful very beautiful I love the like the color on her was everything she sits down with Sarah and Seba and they tell um they give her an update about a kind and 
um, Sarah ends up being like, girl, he hung up in my face after I asked him like to give me a break or give me some grace about taking care of my son. And Nina was like, uh, yeah, girl, it's time to leave him alone. Your friend ain't going to leave him alone. Cause she a bird. <laughs> she a bird. <laughs> she a bird. And so Seba is like, that's what I've been telling her. That's what I've been telling her. And so Nina was just like, stop wasting your time with him. Like, don't waste another minute with him. It's time for you to move on with your life. And I said, you right. You are absolutely right. Okay. So then we see Brooks and um, this boy named Max pull up. And he definitely did look like he was in his his 20s and very much younger than Brooks. And everyone was like, where did she get him? From the cradle? From the, like, where did she get that boy? And so Brooks doesn't kiss their hand. She shakes it and, you know, she bows and whatever. You got Brooks saying, you got Ayan with her ashy hands, <laughs> putting her ashy hand at me. And then you got Stanberry with the, the, with the sun-dried hands from tanning. Girl, what is this? <laughs> What is, what is this? Everybody is like, girl, what is this? Like, nobody is really impressed with them sitting there. Like, they were like, what in the royal BS is all it is? But everyone sees Max. They're all making jokes about how young he is and everything. You got Seba being like, Brooks, where did you pick your boyfriend up at? Like, what daycare is he from? And she's like, not too much, not too much. And Brooks is like, there's nothing sexual going on between us. We talked online. I thought he was really cool and we friends. I said, mm-hmm. You letting that man do things to you. So then you had Sergio pull up. He was like, I'm not the, uh, he was like, I'm not the youngest one at the party anymore. <laughs> After he sees Max and he's all happy and giddy. Then Caroline's like, Sergio, take that bow off. I was with Caroline. That bow did not do it for me. I said, why is it pink? <laughs> She's like, you look like a waiter. He really did. He really did. Then you have Talene and Rafi come in. They actually do like kiss, you know, both ladies' hands. They they get a good laugh of it, out of it, and they sit down. And everyone's for the most part is having a good time. Then Lisa and Rich come come in, and Lisa is not like she not doing it. She was like, I'm not kissing y'all's hand. Like y'all look beautiful. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And I was like, Lisa, all you had to do was just take their hands and shake it. If you didn't want to kiss their hand, you didn't have to kiss their hand. But you could already tell that Lisa was coming in with like uncomfortable energy. Like she wasn't get like she gave very much like, I don't really want to be here. I think this party is stupid. I, this is everybody moving funny to me. I'm turned off by this, but rich, her husband actually did it. And Stanberry was like, Lisa will never admit that she's bothered at the fact that me and Ion are friends. And it is true. I do think Lisa is bothered that Ion and Lisa are friends. So then, you know, we see the guys talking about the cars that are in the house and everything and just admiring the cars. And the house looks lovely. It's a lovely house. We then have um, everyone, them ushering everyone into the theater of the home. They were like, we need to get everybody in the theater of the home. And so they start playing this huge, on the Jumbotron, this huge screen of uh, a video that Ayan and Lisa did together. And Lisa is like, what is this? Everybody was like, it was cringy, but you can see the disdain and irritation in Lisa's face. Even <laughs> Brooks was like, you can see the venom coming out of Lisa's eyes. <laughs> she, she, she hates this. And Lisa already had an attitude. Cause I think she was also hungry. Cause she was asking the girls like, where the food at? Like, where is the food? And then this was kind of like the cherry on top with them showcasing this video of Ayan and, um, Stanberry saying welcome it was very much cheesy and corny but Lisa was like this is stupid she was irritated she was so irritated like I said Lisa is not enthused by that video she over here being like can I get my five minutes of my life back <laughs> we start seeing the girls mingle I don't know where they all got them tiaras but they all got on tiaras and uh Ayan is asking Lisa if she's having a good time Lisa is like enjoy you know I'm having fun whatever and then she ends up telling Ayan you really on this ride with this person and when you crash I'm gonna laugh at you but you know enjoy the ride enjoy the ride so Lisa saying in them comments that she wasn't bothered by them being friends I said girl you're lying you are definitely bothered by Ayan by Ayan and Stanberry being friends like you are it's childish and it's immature but you are and like sometimes you just need to admit it that you are bothered by it so you can move on from it so you start to see like the hors d'oeuvres and everything being passed around you then see 
Like Ayan tried to have a conversation with Lisa because she can tell that Lisa is irritated. And Lisa's like, um, she goes up to Lisa while it's Sergio, her husband and them standing around. And she was like, can I talk to you? And Lisa's like, for what? For what? Like, what do you want to talk about? And Ayan is like, you really don't want to talk to me? And she's like, what do we need to talk about? So then Ayan was like, okay. So she walks away and she goes and like finds her husband. And then Rich, um, Lisa's husband is like, why are you not trying to talk to your best friend? Like, go talk to your friend. And she's like, I really don't want to talk to her. So then you see Ayan outside with a few other people. And she's telling him like, she really don't want to talk to me. Like she acted funny. And this guy is like, well, you still look beautiful by the way. And so then she goes and tells Talene and them that Ayan, like, like Ayan goes and tells Talene and them that Lisa doesn't want to talk to her and she don't understand what the what the issue is so then she's outside with her husband telling Ayan telling her husband like I don't get why she acting funny towards me and her husband trying to give like sound advice being like you know friendships go through ups and downs but what keeps you in the friendship is the good times so just focus on that and y'all get over this so then Lisa is walking around and Talene is like Ayan is like upset. She said that you're like mad at her and Lisa's like for real. So I feel like Lisa doesn't want people to perceive her in a negative way because like, girl, she did come up to you and try to talk to you and you didn't want to talk to her. So of course she gonna, she gonna go tell people like, I tried to talk to her and I like, she don't want to talk to me. So then Lisa comes outside and she's like, what's, what's up? And Ayana's is like, you, you not trying to talk to me and I'm trying to have a conversation with you. Lisa lies. And she's like, I told you to give me a minute, girl. We did not see you tell that girl to give you a minute. We did not see you tell that girl to give you a minute. So then they start on this conversation about Lisa act like Ayan acting different when she's around Lisa and Ayan like Lisa is kind of looking at Ayan like, are you seriously bringing this up? And she was like, I don't really want to talk about that. And Ayan is like, you can't tell me what we what like what not to talk about. Like I feel like we need to talk about this. And Lisa's like, are you serious? And Ayan's like, yes. Like I don't want them because they're my friends to be feeling like. I'm acting funny or I'm acting a different way because you're around. Like, I just like, what do you like? Like, what do you mean? And Lisa's like, really, Ayan? Really? So then Lisa brings up, well, you're the same person who was telling me that they're all these women are also talking behind my back. Cause I don't understand how they got to this conversation about like Lisa bragging and Stanberry telling her that like, um, Stanberry telling Ayan that Lisa was bragging about buying her parents' house. And Ayan is like in her confessional saying, that's not what I said, but Lisa is like, God strike me down. I pray on, like, I, I put this on my kids. You did say that. You did tell me that Stanberry said that I like, excuse me, that I was um, bragging and I was begging and that's why the girls don't like me or something like that. So then Lisa's like, you know what, Ayan, I'm not about to have this conversation with you. So she goes back into the party because there's an outside part and there's an indoor part. And um, Lisa is like, she's lying. Like she said that I was bragging. So Stanberry comes outside and Stanberry is like, what's wrong? And she was like, did I say that you said, like, you never said that she was begging when you brought up the whole house thing. And Stanberry was like, no, I never said that. Well, she's trying to say that I said she said that. And I guess Lisa can hear it. So Lisa came up and she's like, Ayan, you're lying because you definitely told me that she said that I was bragging about buying her parents' home. And Ayana's is like, no, I'm not. I never said that. Like, I never said she that she said that um you were bragging. And Lisa is like, yes, you did. Like, I put that on. That's when she said, I put that on my kids. God strike me down. And then she told um Lisa. Lisa told Ayan, put that on your son. Put that on Taj. And Ayan did. And that really pissed Lisa off because she was like, our friendship will never survive this because you're blatantly lying right now. And you could tell that Stanberry was like taken aback. How like hard they were going at each other she actually looked kind of like sad for them because she was just like and she was trying to like stop them from fighting but like they was in it (laughs) they was in everyone's looking around and they're going off on each other and lisa's like you're you're lying and ayan's like no i'm not you're lying so then stanberry no lisa no what's it called Lisa's like, Lisa said something like, I'm done with you. And then Ayan said, I'm done with you too. And then they go into the house. Ayan is like, 
I like you like really Lisa like you gonna say I'm a liar and all this stuff and then you have Lisa in the house being like you're a liar like Ayan like I can't believe you're blatantly lying like this you're nothing but a liar so you got Brooks and Seba being like girl what's going on <laughs> I would be I would be like girl what's going on and everyone's trying to understand Sarah is like I don't Lisa in the name calling I'm like girl if she's a liar she's a liar you know name calling or not and so. Brooks is like, well, they fighting and this ain't got nothing to do with me. So here we go. I wasn't the cause of it. And so they're back in the party. Lisa and Ayan are still going back and forth. And she's like, you're lying. Like you're lying. Like you told me that Stanberry said that I was bragging. You told me, you, you told me that. And, um, what's it called? Ayan is like, no, I didn't. And so Lisa is like still being like, girl, you're a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. And then out of nowhere, like Ayan starts crying. Like, and this was given, I would have been irritated after that. Cause it was very much girl. Why are you making a scene? Like we've already made a scene with us yelling in this party. You're making it worse. Being like, ah, she, she hurt me. She hurt me. And you got her son and Rich just looking like, girl, what is happening? What is happening? So then uh, Stanberry is trying to grab <laughs> Ayana and take her upstairs because she was like, girl, you doing too much. Um, what's it called? What's it called? I think Brooks was trying to talk to Lisa and be like, girl, like what's going on? Honestly, the whole scene was like so chaotic because you got Ayan over here, like being dramatic and crying. You got Lisa talking to her husband being like, I'm like, I don't think we, we gonna ever be cool. And the husband's like, no, I think y'all good. And she's like, no, rich. I, I really don't think we can ever be cool. You got her in the, um, in the room being like, Oh my God, I can't believe she called me untrustworthy and a liar while they're upstairs in the room. Caroline is trying to calm uh, Stanberry down. Um, she got Sarah running after them being like, girl, what's going on? Why is the word bragging causing this much strife in y'all relationship? Y'all are always trying to act like your friendship is so perfect and it's not. Then Stanberry is just like, honestly, the root of this is that I'm we're friends and that's the issue that me and you are friends together. And so you got Lisa in the confessional like, like breaking down, being like, I just, I, I can't right now. Like I can't. And she gets up and walks away. And then Sarah's in the room upstairs with, um, Stanberry, Ion, her husband and being like, I don't understand why the word bragging really triggered her that much, but you got Ion being like, she, our relationship will never be the same. She called me untrustworthy and a liar in front of my son. And I'm just like, well, if you've been untrustworthy, then you were untrustworthy. And if you are lying, then you were lying. Well, my apologies if the breakdown was confusing, but honestly, the scene was confusing to me and I watched it back twice. Like it was so much going on. I was like, this is chaotic. <laughs> this is very chaotic. But I'm going to be honest. Uh, like, like I said in the spicy corner, I definitely think the breakdown in their relationship is both Ion and Lisa's fault. Maybe one person might be more at fault than the other, but they both played a part in this because for y'all to break up a friendship that y'all has said, have y'all been friends for years over like someone being called untrustworthy or a liar or, you know, the voice note situation or the fact that Ion is friends with Stanberry that says a lot that y'all really don't communicate with each other very well. And maybe it was a good thing that the friendship is no longer the same anymore. Maybe so like I, I oftentimes believe that sometimes things have to break for you to rebuild them, to make them better. You know what I mean? Because I just feel like Lisa is bothered by the fact that Ion is friends with Stanberry. And I think it is stems from her defending Ion so much last season because Lisa and Stanberry really didn't have issues in the beginning of the season until Ion was very voicing her opinions and feelings about Stanberry and feeling like Stanberry was shafting her and pushing her to the side. And then Lisa stood up for her the same way Lisa fell out with Nina because Nina told her not to get cool with Stanberry, but then Nina ended up hanging out with um, Stanberry and ended up like, in her and I at least felt some type of way because she was like girl you telling me not to be cool with the lady but then you clicking up with her and going on family dates with her you know what I'm saying and I think Lisa just feels like she feels like she and I think she feels betrayed because she 
I think she feels like she has egg on her face for like listening to these people or standing up for these people. The same way Brooks felt that way about standing up for Talene and stuff. Like, I think they just feel like, girl, I stood up for you. You should have my back type of energy. But the truth is Lisa is bothered by the fact that Ayan is cool with her. And granted, you can say, well, yeah, Ayan shouldn't be cool with Stanberry because Stanberry made those comments about Lisa possibly being a prostitute and um, still in her business ideas and all of that stuff. But this is housewives. Like, to a certain level, some things you just have to, like, move past and, like, keep going forward. Like, that's the name of the game. Like, the la- like I saw, it was Heather DeBro's interview. Not an interview. She was on Watch What Happens Live. And she was like, this show forces you to move forward. Like, you, like even if you don't want to, you still have to move forward. And because if you don't move forward, it becomes stale, it becomes old, and then you get booted off or left behind. And that's the issue with Lisa. Like, Lisa is taking these situations too much to heart. And it's like, girl, you kind of have to, like, take things with a grain of salt. Unless somebody does something egregious to you and then keep it moving forward, you know. Like, if it was on, like, the Phaedra and Candy level or, like, Um, what's it called Candace and Giselle energy or even um I can understand Danielle and Jennifer type stuff like I can understand you holding on to that and being like I'm not cool with that person you know what I'm saying but like this right here y'all were slinging mud back and forth so you have to take your part about it and keep moving forward and unfortunately I don't think Lisa can do that And, and again if they get a season three maybe she might be different you know, she might be able to, but they still arguing on Twitter about this season. I think Stanberry and Lisa were going back and forth about like houses and who got more money and who's the richest and who has this and who has that. And it's just stupid at this point. <laughs> it is. But I just feel like it sucks that their friendship is like Ayan and Lisa are no longer friends, but they both played a part. Ayan enjoyed the fact that Lisa was jealous. She always wanted to be friends with Stanberry. She did look like she was trying to be somewhat of a pick me with playing that voice note because Stanberry didn't ask you to play the voice note. You played it because you wanted to have a moment with her. Then you was mad at her for no reason because she didn't ask you to do it so it's just like y'all both lack maturity when it comes to this situation but let's read the ending cue cards so with Stanberry they said Stanberry and Ion are now closer than ever Sergio wants a baby now more than ever surrogacy is now legal in Dubai never say never so they might have a baby with Sarah. You have Sarah's maid is out of, um, out of her hand and Matum's life's forever. A kind is still trying to make his way back to Sarah. I don't think so because she told page six, she hired a private investigator on him. And I don't know how he feel about that, but if I was him, I wouldn't rock with her. She also says they rekindled briefly before a kind's jealousy reared its head again, girl bird. Cause he hung up in your face. Like he said, you're not going to embarrass me, but I'm going to embarrass you. (laughs) No, ma'am. It says for Caroline Brooks, it says Caroline has ended her spiritual healing journey. Girl, was she ever on one? Um, Her truce with Talene has also ended. We see it all up on Twitter. Um, She is currently expanding the glass house to new locations where Lisa is more than welcome to host her next event. You know, good for her business. Hopefully it's growing and thriving and she has a better management of her like stress and drinking so Talene Talene is not giving up on her matchmaking effort she's recently co-founded a dating app girl when we we only saw her match make one time and that was with Sarah (laughs) okay she said Rafi still has a baby boy fever Talene not so much girl don't have that baby uh, for Lisa, it says Lisa reached out to Ayan on multiple occasions, but Ayan did not return her calls or messages. They no longer are closer like Jesus and God. That sucks. So I guess their friendship might be really over. So then Ayan, it says Ayan is still waiting for an apology from Lisa. She has changed Lisa's name in her phone from the hottest Jamaican to the betrayer and the heartless. Girl, she dramatic. <laughs> she is so dramatic. So dramatic too dramatic but yeah y'all that is it that is all as always remember to be bravely authentic and definitely hop down in the comments below and share your thoughts for me overall